please welcome Anna Adlerstein. Wow, there's a lot of you. Great question. Okay, sorry, give me just a second here, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Everybody having a great day? Okay, great. I am, I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited to be here with you all. This is great. So, have you all seen this video? Yeah, so this is a lady, she walks around New York getting catcalled a million times, right? Um, I'm sure you have an opinion about it. I certainly have an opinion about it. Um, I'd like to play somebody else's opinion about it um, that you may or may not have heard. If you walk down the street looking like that, any man in his right mind going to stop and they're going to look and say, hey, how you doing? She looked nice, she was thick, she was pretty, and she looked like she was easy because of her outfit she had on. All right, so this is like a blatant objectification of a woman, um, not to mention it's just not true, right? Wait, 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 what was her outfit? She had on them tight pants, remember? Oh, uh, what did she have on? She had, she had jeans and a crew neck. And they was gripping, and she, you could see all them curves and everything. I know she was looking attractive, and I said... Wait, wait, blue jeans? I mean, blue jeans are like, you're wearing blue jeans right now. Yeah, but it's different, I'm a man. So, maybe you've guessed how I met this man, Jerome. I would love to have that opportunity to take you out and treat you like the queen you are for real. I think you're a beautiful young lady, you know what I'm saying? So Jerome, Kat called me. Um, so I'm a radio producer and a 27 foot something or other. I didn't quite hear it from backstage. <laughs> that, yep, demigod, yes, demigod. Um, but my job is to tell true stories on in audio, um, and I do this because I want to make a better sense of the world and the people in it. So I figure that there's no better place to start with some, than with someone that I really just don't understand at all. Um, there's this quote that I love by a French filmmaker, Jean Renoir, that says, the awful thing about life is this, everybody has their reasons. So what are Jerome's reasons? Why is he catcalling? Why is he sitting in this park bench in Oakland telling women who walk by that they are queens? Like, what is the deal? So I take a step back, um, and it turns out it's just totally a numbers game. If I can get five of them women out of that 10 number, <laughs> nine out of 10, I'm going to sleep with at least three out of that five. I'm not great at math, but I'm not following. Um, so I'll take another step back and I um, ask him, Jerome's in his early 50s. I ask him, like, what age group of women is he catcalling? I prefer like 21 or better because I feel that if you're 21, no matter how many miles you had on you, you don't have as many miles as a 31 or Are you talking about a woman like a car right now, Jerome? I'm gonna have to stop you. No, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about a car, I'm talking about five. miles. So maybe this is not the right place to find common ground. So do you guys know that thing that happens when you go to a party and you don't know anyone and you're like meeting someone for the first time? You say, what do you do for a living? And they say, you know, something about finance and you're like, uh-huh. Um, <laughs> so then you're like, cool, where are you from? Um, and they like name a state that like you probably could pick out on a map, but like, you're not positive, like you probably know what the capital is. Um, and like, so we do this, we like take steps back one by one until we, you know, learn enough about their story to find a commonality to latch on to. You know, this person is great at polka dancing, this is awesome, the party is totally worthwhile. Um, so back to Jerome, I'm striking out, so I do this thing, I take another step back, I dig deeper. Um, does he catcall women of all races? And he tells me he mostly reaches out to African-American women. I think the reason that I holler at mostly sisters is because 
I grew up in Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago. I grew up in the projects, Robert Taylor. It was always segregated. Everywhere that we lived was all black. I'm talking about nowhere could you find a white person living. You'll see them ride past in a car, but that's it. And then I really never knew what to say to a white girl or anybody outside of black until I came here and I started being around them and then I started working with them and stuff like that because when I was in Chicago, I never worked. I never worked a day in my life in Chicago. I didn't start working until I came here because I always hustled in the street. At one point, I was actually hood rich. It wasn't until so much time went past I started losing so many what, friends. What, what was your hustle? Weed and rocks. The awful thing about life is this. Everybody has their reasons. So Jerome and I have had very different lives. You know, I have no idea who I would be if I had grown up in the projects in the 70s and 80s without a stable father figure. You know, I don't know who I would be if my first heartbreak had come when I was 14, when I'd gotten my best friend's sister pregnant. You know, who would I be if I wished that I could go back and marry that girl? Do you ever want to settle down with anyone? I promise you I want to settle down. I say, I know in order for me to find the right girl, I got to go outside my box. I got to find me somebody like about 40 or 45 years old. I can't marry nobody about half my age. Do you think you want this to be the kind of woman that you call it on the street, or do you want this to be a different type I of woman? I wouldn't even care. I just wanted to cross my path. I don't care if I met on the street, in a grocery store, at a dog fight. I don't care. I just want to meet her and say, and my heart say, that's the one. And then we date, and then we kick it, and we get to know each other. And then, and then she say, you want to get married? Or I say it first, and she say, yeah. I like, set the date. This is great, Jerome. Thank you so much for talking to me. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. I want to always give you updates. I got so much, and I won't know how to bring it out unless somebody asks me them questions. I don't live the interesting life, and then I promise you, I have a great view on life. And uh, I always try to do the right thing. I always try to do the right thing. Always. So why do stories matter? Well, you can think what you want of Jerome, but he's a friend of mine now. Um, whenever I run into him on the street, he really brightens my day. As much as I love the quote above, I would like to leave you with an alternative. The wonderful thing about life is this. Everybody has their reasons. Thank you.